All right. <clears throat> so last Tuesday, I had introduced to you two methods to find the intersection between two solids. The first one was the select line method or the generator method and the second one was the cutting plane method. So here is a little revision. Okay, so the first one is the generator method. Okay, important points or salient features. Step one, that's something which is critical. You have to figure out the view where the intersection points are obvious. Okay, and the way to figure that thing out is to figure if the intersection points are going to be lying on one of the solids. Look at the front view, look at the top view and look at the profile view and you will figure that your intersection points will be lying on this circle in the profile view. So once you have figured that thing out, the next thing you would do is you would generate a bunch of lines that would represent the surface of the other solid. You would generate again a bunch of lines that would represent the surface of the other solid. Okay? And that's the reason why the name the generator method or the select line method. Step two, use generators to represent the other solid. Okay? For example, this line. This line would be a line on the slant surface of the cone. Okay? So this line is 311. Okay? Line 311. In fact, these are two lines. The first one is towards you and the second one is away from you. That's behind the cone. Right? So first one is towards you. The second one is behind the cone. Okay? And the best way to visualize this in the front view is this. So this is the first line, line 11. And this is the second line, line number 3. So this line that is on the slant surface of the cone is in fact representing two lines in the front view. Okay? And in the top view, of course, if you project this guy over here, this would be line 11 and this one here would be line number 3. Okay? Step 3 and this is something which is important. You have to exercise care in labeling and following them. If you don't label these lines properly and these intersection points properly, it will be difficult for you to connect the dots later on. Okay? Now, Basu was asking me this before. How did I connect these intersection points here and here? So if I look at the intersection points on the circle in the profile view, I go A, B, C, D, E. So I go in order. And I follow the same order in the front view as well as in the top view. So I go A, B, okay, and then C, and then D, and then E, and so on. Likewise here, A, B, C, D, and so on. Now if you notice, from this height and above okay this part will be visible in the top view so this part is going to be visible in the top view okay and from d onwards from this height down below these guys will be hidden they will be invisible and that's the reason why these lines are shown using hidden lines or dotted lines okay so you'll have to be very very careful in following the labels properly because if you don't then you'll mess up the connections between the dots between the intersection points all right so once you have all these lines ready you figure out the intersection for example this is one of the intersection points i call it i i project it onto the front view now these are in fact two intersection points again one is towards you and the other one is behind the cone. Okay? So this intersection points get, gets mapped at these two points in the front view. Okay? 
And these intersection points lie on lines or generators number 3 and 11, respectively. 3 and 11. Now, which of these 3 and 11 generators is towards you? Is it 3 or is it 11? OK, if you stand here, and if you look at this view, which one of these will be towards you? All right. So once you have these intersection points, map them onto the front view. So this one will be lying on generator 11. And this one will be lying on generator number 3. Importantly, do not miss any intersection point. OK? All right. So this was the select line method or the generator method. And it works only when the intersection points are obvious in one of the views. OK? The other method was the cutting plane method. OK? And look at these views, for example. And the method works better when the intersection points are not obvious. And I'll give you an example later today. OK? Step number two, you should know what the intersection between the cutting plane and solids yield. For example, if I you know, cut through this assembly of the cone and the cylinder through these horizontal planes, the intersection between the cone and the horizontal plane will be a circle, of course. And the intersection between the cylinder, this cylinder, and the horizontal plane will be a rectangle. So eventually, determining intersection would boil down to determining the intersection between the circles and the rectangles in the top view. Okay? So this step is critical. You should know what the intersection between the cutting plane and solid yields. Okay? Let's take an example. So let's take plane D slicing the assembly of cone and cylinder. Okay, so corresponding to this plane, okay, uh, the intersection between this plane and the cone gives me a circle. Okay, and the intersection between this plane and the cylinder gives me a rectangle. Okay, so in the top view, how many intersection points would you see? You would see four intersection points. So you need to compute the intersection. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. These intersection points are going to be lying on which plane in the front view? Plane number D, plane number four. Okay, project points of intersection to the respective planes. So you are going to be drawing a bunch of lines, a bunch of circles, a bunch of arcs, and uh, you know. Somewhere in between, you'll be thoroughly confused and you'll be like, all right, so be very, very careful. And that's where labeling happens to be very important. All right, so all you need to do is project these points down onto the respective plane. And in this case, these are the two intersection points in the front view. Okay? So, summary of what we had discussed on Tuesday. Notice here that you will have two other intersection points on the back side of the cone. Okay? Which ones are going to be in the front? This one and this one. Which ones are going to be in the back? These two guys. Okay? Once again, do not and do not miss out on any intersection point. Otherwise, your connectivity will not be proper. So the connection or this contour, or rather these contours will not be proper. All right. Another example. And I'll give you a slightly different angle to solve this. So this is uh, the example of determining the intersection between two prisms, two rectangular prisms. One is vertical, the other one is horizontal. OK? Inspect the three views. Are the intersection points obvious? 
are the intersection points obvious? Yes or no? Yes. From where do you think you would be getting the intersection points? Profile view. Wonderful. Wonderful. But I'll, so you can use the generator method to solve this, but I'll give you another method. And uh, this is something along the lines of uh, the lines and planes, the concepts that you had learned in previous lectures, hopefully. First thing you would want to do is start labeling. Okay, so P Q R S is this prism that's penetrating the vertical prism inside. So P is actually a line, and so is Q, and so is R, and so is S. Okay. Okay, so P is this line. Q is a line which is closer to you or away from you. Which is closer, na? R, and then S is another horizontal line which is away from you. Okay. So if you go on to your top view, line P appears here, Q appears here, R again at the center, and S onto the top. Okay. All right. Label the vertical prism in the front view. So A, B, C, D. Okay, so this is A, B, back side or the back edge C and D. And likewise over here, A comes from here, B comes from here, the center, C comes from the top over here and D again at the center. Step one, you have to do labeling properly. Okay. Now, you can think about these two prisms as being composed of four different planes. A, B, C, D is composed of four planes and P, Q, R, S is also composed of four planes. All right. So the problem boils down to figuring out the intersection between any two planes. So it's like a plane plane intersection. Nah? Notice again that in the profile view, PQ, QR, RS, and PS, they happen to be in the edge view. Okay? So this plane, this plane, and this plane here, they happen to be all in the edge view, in the profile view. Okay? So it's easier for us to figure out the intersection between planes and planes. If we have a view where one of the planes is in the edge view, na? All right. So extend this plane PQ. Where do you expect the first point of intersection? So if you are trying to figure the intersection between two planes AB and PQ, so this is plane AB and this is plane PQ. Where do you expect your first point of intersection to be? Here, okay. It's quite obvious, na? It's quite obvious. Now, this point of intersection is lying on which of the edges? Which of the edges in or on the vertical prism? A and. Do not miss any intersection point. A and. Would it be A? B and D, na? So one point is here, the second point is here. All right. <clears throat> now this point, the intersection corresponding to this point will not be obvious. And that's the reason why I had extended this plane. Now it's easier for me to locate this intersection point. Okay? So this intersection point will be lying on edge A. Okay, point number two. But the intersection is actually happening here. But before that, plain plane intersection would give me what? A line. Intersection between two planes implies a straight line. So one line would be this one, joining one and two. The second line will be this one, joining one and two. 
all right? Now, my actual intersection is happening here, right? So, if I extend this edge q s, ok, these are the two points where my act where my actual intersection is happening, ok. All right, this is like a pseudo intersection point, this is not the real intersection point, this is where the actual intersections are happening, these two points. Okay. Having said that, it is actually the edge q which is going inside which is kind of you know hampering this intersection from happening. Okay. So, you need to extend edge q from both sides because edge q is going to be visible in the front view. Second guy intersection between which of the two planes q r and well, are you are you solving the intersection between two planes or three planes? Notice, this is QR and QR is intersecting with plane AB and plane AD on the back side. So be very careful, and that's the reason why labels help. All right, so extend this. One obvious intersection point is point number three. This point on the vertical prism is going to be lying on edges B and D. Okay, so this point 3 will lie here, this point 3 will lie here, okay, and this pseudo intersection point that will lie on A. If I call it point number 4, extend it, it will lie here. Again, intersection between two planes will give me a straight line. In this case, that straight line will be joining points 3 and 4, I will get one of these and the second one of these. Okay. Once again, this is not my actual intersection point. Intersection, actual intersection is happening over here. All right. So my intersection lines they get extended only to this point. Okay. R S point number five project that point number 4 and 5 they will be essentially here at the same point p q extend that get the zero intersection point number 6 project that your point number 6 will be here ok relatively simpler example. Now, notice that the intersection between plane r s and the back side of the vertical prism is hidden and so is the intersection line between p s and the back side of the prism and they are hidden precisely behind these lines and that is the reason why they are not visible. So, that is something that you will have to keep in mind all right. So, the horizontal prism is penetrating inside the vertical prism. So, you will have a hidden line there a hidden line there. Okay, and a hidden line there. Notice how these two points they correlate with the top view. So, if you take the projections up from these two points, this is where they occur. Won't there be a hidden line? That is what my next question is think and analyze what you have to think about or what you have to say about these hidden lines this one this one and this one are they going to be there or are they not going to be there are they going to be there or are they not going to be there I for the drawing now think about that all right. So, let me do a little what we say in IIT Bombay Kira you know what Kira is. So, it is uh, one of the lingo words in IIT Bombay. So, this was a relatively simpler example. So, let me rotate this horizontal prism by some angle 
and uh, see how interesting my problem becomes. Okay, I rotate it clockwise by some angle. Similar story, intersection between two planes, four planes forming a vertical prism, four planes forming a horizontal prism, the labels happen to be the same, you know P Q, Q R, R S and P S they all happen to appear in the edge view in the profile view. Okay. So, it is kind of obvious for me to extract the intersection point information from the profile view. Okay. Having said that, now of course, when I rotate this horizontal prism P Q R S, the corresponding projections in the front view and the top view they will change. Now, okay. first intersection point. Okay, we, we, we need to figure out the uh, intersection visibility of both the prisms. Extend this prism, so you will have one intersection point, zero intersection point. Okay, now, do you say that the first intersection point, which is kind of obvious, is going to be this one? Yes? Where is that intersection point going to lie? B D all right. This is my second section point, zero in section point, not real. Project this guy onto B and D. So this is one and this is one. So notice that I am labeling my intersection points as I identify them and as I project them onto different views. Okay? Because if I do not, you know what is going to happen. Project point number 2, point number 2 is going to be lying on edge A, not C, but A. Okay. In section of two planes, they give me a line. So, the real intersection is going to be happening here, okay, at point number 3. Likewise, over there at point number 3, I am not formalizing my drawings as yet. I will go forward, I will extend Q R. Now, in this case, I do not have real intersection points here and here. So, I will need to extend this plane on both sides till I hit the two edges of the vertical prism. Okay. Pseudo intersection point number 4 and number 5. 4 lies on edge A, project that, this is where my 4 is. 5 lies on B and D project these okay, and this is where point number 5 or points number 5 they lie. Straight lines joining 4 and 5, okay. so if you extend this plane 4 and 5 will be the actual straight line between the two planes that will be representing the uh, intersection between two of them. Okay. This is point number 6, which is the actual or real intersection, and point number 6 is going to be lying on 4, 5 here and here. Okay. Point number 6 is there, and 6 is there. With me? With me? Let us continue. Extend this guy. Once again, we will get two pseudo intersection points number 7, number 8, 7 lies on A, 8 lies on edge C of the vertical prism, project 7, 7 lies on A, 8 lies on C the back side, the back side. All right, so 7 and 8 will be a straight line all right. Point number 9 this is where the actual intersection is happening. Project that number 9 would lie on B and D. Nah? B and D. So, 9 would lie here on B and it would lie here on D. Okay. And the actual intersection line will be the line joining points 8 and 9 there and there. 
ok, but this one is the actual insection point ok. So, if I project that identify it as 10 if I project that point number 10 is here and here messy already messy ok and the final thing extend PS identify that in section point as 11 this one as 12 project 11 11 is going to be lying on the back side of the vertical prism C and 12 will be lying on B and D ok join 11 and 12 or maybe join 10 and 10 and 12 in fact they would essentially happen to be on the same straight line ok same straight line. So, join 11 and 12 ok the actual insection is happening here ok all right all right all right 13 13 lies somewhere over here and here once you have identified these in section points now you need to connect them which ones of these will be real which ones of these will not be real all those points which lie on the horizontal prism for example, 1 3 6 9 10 and 13 they will be real in section points ok number 1 number 3 number 6 number 9 10 and 13. <coughs> Once you identify the loop the connectivity you can connect the dots in the front view ok. Now, 1 to 3 is that line going to be visible 1 to 3 line 1 3 is that going to be visible. Well, of course, you need to project these insection points up. Okay, that is something which is going to be a little tedious, but you should be able to do that. Okay, this would be an exercise for you. All right, so line one three. That's going to be visible. How about the next one? Three six. Three six. Is that going to be visible? Now, 6 to 9 it will be a hidden line because it is going to be on the back side of this prism ok. If you are looking at the assembly from here this guy is going to be behind ok. 9 to 10 9 to 10 visible not visible 10 to 13 visible not visible hmm? hidden 13 to 1 13 to 1 you need to be a little careful because third huh? this guy here although it might appear to you that this would be visible actually these two points are lying on the back side of the vertical prism. So, be very very careful be very careful this would be hidden ok. So, you know the previous example was quite straightforward. you know uh, this line and this line they merged this line and this line they merged and uh, you actually got a very nice V shaped thing now nah? this one is quite tedious. So, very nice example of how labeling helps you connect the dots better yeah. Yeah. You can if you want to easier less messy yeah you can you can all right you figure out the visibility of the prisms now 
ok figure out the visibility of the prisms. So, you know the concepts from uh, lines and planes the visibility try to figure that thing out. I would not say a word I just keep flashing different lines which are going to be green in color ok. This is going to be visible that will be visible this will be visible this one here will be hidden huh why is that why is that s is on the back side yeah this guy here this line here is hidden ok and so is this line ok. Mirror image the same thing and you will get the result. This line is going to be hidden ok p is inside or p is penetrating the vertical prism and so is r. What about 3 t 10 10 this guy and this guy yeah yeah so you see that one solid has been cut through and other has been solid right? yeah so suppose both are equal in size and it is placed between then we cannot tell which is removed and which is into which so in that case you will make dotted this one if they are equal in size so if the uh, model that you had drawn yesterday yeah ok. No, it was no in that model it was the cone that was cut it is quite obvious yeah what uh, come again both of these are solid and they are exactly fitting into each other. Yeah. So, we cannot distinguish between them unless which one has been cut and which one has not been cut if they are of the same size. Sir, no, no. So, both of them are solid here. So, suppose they are made up of clay in that case you cannot distinguish which is which part. They are just acting as a single piece. Yeah. What is two different parts. Mm -hmm. So, so there should be no line is actually there should be no lines inside the so you're saying that there should not be any lines here because you have you don't have much clue about which one is penetrating which one is 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 this can be single piece only this could be a single piece yeah 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 this could be a single piece yeah that will not make lines inside true true how can we distinguish that this is not a single piece it should be taken as a single piece of solid. So, the question is this so given two prisms the horizontal one the vertical one how do you figure which one is penetrating the other one ok number one question number two or related question is what if the entire thing is a single piece that none of the prism is penetrating the other one. So, if the latter is the case then these horizontal lines may not be shown, but if the former is the case then you need to show those horizontal lines and the q has to be derived from the three views that are given to you. The clue has to be taken from the three views which are given to you.
Yeah. Why isn't it shown in the question in the top view all the time? I haven't actually uh, shown uh, the intersection in the top view or have I? Yeah, yeah, so. <coughs> no, 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 no. So, you guys are in a habit of getting everything on the plate, no? Don't, don't, don't. Uh, you figure it out. There has to be some thinking and analyzing that you need to do. So, if you are going to be using or if you are going to be drawing these lines, of course, you need to figure out the corresponding lines whether they are going to be there or not in top view. You figure it out. Can you say that uh, how does the question communicate to us whether the whole thing is a single solid or there is a minimum? I have to go. How does the three views communicate to you if one of the solids is penetrating the other solid? What if I give that information that one of the solids is penetrating the other solid? Then it's going to be clear. Otherwise, it's not going to be clear. So assume that I'm going to be giving that information to you. All right. So this one is quite interesting. Intersection between two cones, a vertical cone and a horizontal cone. The three views are shown to you. And my first question is. Are the intersection points obvious from these three views? Are the intersection points obvious from these three views? Is it possible for you to figure out the intersection points just by inspecting each of these views? Yeah, or the nine? No? No, so it's not going to be easy for you to use the generator method or the select line method. So instead, you would want to use the cutting plane method. So the intersection points, to me at least, they don't seem to be obvious. Use the cutting plane method. Okay, so use use a bunch of horizontal planes, slicing the assembly of these two cones. Okay. Now, if you slice the assembly using a bunch of these horizontal planes. Intersection between one horizontal plane and this vertical cone will give you what? It will give you a circle. Intersection between the same horizontal plane and this horizontal cone, uh, horizontal cone is going to be giving you what? A hyperbola. So your intersection problem, your problem of intersection boils down to figuring out the intersection between the circle and a hyperbola. Okay. All right. Now, what I've done, what I've done is I have, you know, used the information that the intersection is going to be over here, intersection is going to be happening over here, here, and here, and correspondingly, I have chosen the respective horizontal planes to slice the assembly. It makes my work a little easier, but I do not guarantee that my solution is going to be accurate. Okay, for more accurate solution, you should be using more number of horizontal planes slicing the assembly of these cones. Okay, so the first horizontal plane is this one, second one is this one, third one is the center, or third one uh, contains the axis of the horizontal cone, fourth one and the fifth one. Okay, now follow this very carefully because things are going to be a little messy. All right, so plane number one. If I look at the intersection between horizontal plane number one and the vertical cone, I am going to be expecting a, expecting a circle in the top view. Okay? And this plane, when cutting this cone, will give me a hyperbola. The vertex of the hyperbola is going to be lying over here. So essentially, I'll be expecting a single point of intersection there and there. Okay. Okay.
stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Now this one, this one is just a fluke, I do not need to actually draw this because I know the intersection points just going to be a single intersection point, wait for the rest of the construction. All right, so plane number 2 intersecting with the vertical cone will give me this circle and when intersecting with the horizontal cone will give me a hyperbola. The vertex of that hyperbola is going to be here, okay. we need to construct it, we need to construct that hyperbola. So, for that, for that how, how, how is the base of the hyperbola going to be, how is the base of the hyperbola, hyperbola going to be. So, the two points which will be lying on this edge of the horizontal cone they are going to be separated by twice this distance from here to here and from here to here 1 and 2. Once I know that and once I know the fact that my apex or the vertex of the hyperbola is going to be lying over here I can draw a box. Once I draw a box I would divide this edge of the box into equal number of parts and this edge of the box into equal number of parts. Okay. Now, from this point I am going to be joining all the points on this edge and from this point the apex of the cone I am going to be joining all these guys all right. Okay, so, let us say equal number of parts I am just using a bunch of points for demonstration not, not so very many join this point of the box with that point over there on that edge ok. Likewise for the second set this one with this one and this one with this one ok. So, you will get a bunch of intersection points. So, intersection between this line and this line which is this point here will give you the first point on the hyperbola and intersection between this line and this one here will give you the second point ok, two points you already know that uh, this point is going to be lying on the hyperbola the vertex draw this hyperbola draw the mirror image of that ok. So, once you have the hyperbola in order find the intersection between the circle and the hyperbola ok, this guy projected down onto the same plane this guy projected down onto the same plane. So, this would be one section point, two intersection points over here and this one ok. Plane number 3 and the assembly, the vertical cone will give me a circle, the horizontal cone will give me kind of a triangle. So, intersection points getting that is not a problem, two intersection points over here and two intersection points over there being projected downward onto plane number 3 you will get these two points, plane number 4 again the vertical cone is going to be giving me a circle, the horizontal cone is going to be giving me a hyperbola. So, you need to draw that hyperbola I will quickly go through that. So, measure this distance make that distance over there and over there ok, draw this box the same construction procedure ok, divide this edge into equal number of parts, that edge into equal number of parts ok, start joining the lines, find the intersection points, you will have 4 intersection points in all or 4 points lying on a hyperbola in all, draw that hyperbola, draw the mirror image of that, find the intersection between the corresponding circle and the hyperbola ok. So, of course, one point will be here and the other point will be here and of course, there would be a corresponding point at the top ok and the fifth point is quite obvious I mean it has to be lying here. So, you do not need to worry about that construction at all it is quite messy. So, I can I can really understand the expression on your face yeah. Okay, so, once you figure out the intersection points as I said 
the number of planes that I have chosen they are not adequate ok. So, they have to be adequate for you to get the actual contour of intersection that is the first one that is the second one ok. And if you realize if you uh, map these intersection points properly in the top view these are going to be shown in red join them get the mirror image of these this is how your cone cone assembly is going to be looking in the front view and in the top view. Now, here I am assuming that the horizontal cone is absent. So, what it has done is it has cut away a portion from the vertical cone and like just gone for right ok and that is one of the reasons why this part is visible otherwise this part would have been you know below the cone. So, that is something that you need to be a little careful about ok and once again if you want to compare this drawing with AutoCAD you know work it out cone cone interaction place your cones properly this is how it is going to look. Now, Vikalp, Avikalp. <coughs> so, I was interacting with him yesterday, right? And uh, he was like, you know, I mean, uh, you showed that uh, cone hexagonal prism assembly yesterday or Tuesday, and how did you cut the cone? I mean, for uh, your hexagonal prism to be fit precisely into it. And to which I said, well, if you want to learn how to cut it, first you have to figure out the intersection contour between the two solids and use the information that one of the solids is developable in fact, in uh, the example on Tuesday both the solids are developable ok. Use the fact that the cone is developable cut the cone spread it out you already have the intersection contour in there cut that part out you know flap or fold your cone back into shape and then you have the slot. So, the first part intersection is something that is covered that has been covered today and last Tuesday development will involve two more lectures next week and then you will learn how to cut one solid to be able to precisely fit the other one.